Chapter 1. Introduction and Basics. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will be discussing some of the basics for using Lattice Radiant. Chapter 1 consists of three sections. In the first section of the chapter, called Installation and Licensing, the general process for downloading Radiant and requesting a license are covered. In section 2 of the chapter, Lattice Radiant Environment, we will introduce Radiant's workspace environment and what it can be used for. Finally, in the third section of the chapter, Project Strategies and Implementations, we will review the basics for Radiant's project strategies and project implementations. Chapter 1, Section 2 Lattice Radiant Environment. In this section of the video series, we will be defining some sections of Radiant's workspace environments. Additionally, some basic information about the file list tab and output window will also be covered. In order to create a new project, users will first have to launch Lattice Radiant. Once Radiant has opened, the first few users will see is its start page. This start page window can be used to do a variety of things, like create or open a project, view additional documentation, or try out Radiant with a template project. As can be seen at the bottom of the figure on the slide, Radiant's Information Center contains several useful icons. The Getting Started, Tutorials, and User Guides icons can be used to help users learn more about Radiant. The Support Center icon can be used to submit technical support requests, access Lattice's answer database, and learn more about the process for requesting licenses. Once a new project has been created, the Radiant workspace should look similar to the figure on the slide. As can be seen from the figure, there are several different parts of the Radiant workspace environment. Before continuing on to the next section, we are going to define some of these sections. The names defined in this slide are what these sections will be referred to as throughout the rest of the introductory training module. At the top of the Radiant workspace is the menu bar. Underneath the menu bar is the toolbar. This section contains several icons that can be used to initialize some of Radiant's tools and functionalities. Underneath the toolbar is the process toolbar and task detail view. These sections are used to run the process flow for Radiant projects and will be covered in more depth later on in the video training series. On the side of the Radiant workspace is the project file list. This section contains all the files in a project. Ad additionally, this section can also be used for project management. Below the project file list is the hierarchy view for the project. This area displays a top-down hierarchical view for all the active design files in a project. In the bottom left of the Radiant workspace are the project tabs. This section can be used to switch between the file list, source template, and IP catalog views. The output window, which can be found at the bottom of the Radiant workspace, is the last section we are going to define. The functionality of this window is discussed later on in the video series. Now that we've The first thing we are going to discuss today are Lattice Radiant's project tabs. When a project is opened in Radiant, the default project tab will be file list. The other two tabs, which are called source template and IP catalog, can be accessed by clicking the tab at the bottom of the window. The project tab that is currently active will have its background grayed out. The file list tab is divided into four different sections. These four sections are basic project information, project strategies, project implementations and project files, and a hierarchical top-down view of the modules in a project. Now that we've introduced the sections in the file list tab, the next few slides will discuss what each section can be used for. The first section of the file list tab is basic information. This section contains some basic information about a Radiant project, like its name and the selected device. The project device is the hardware that users plan on programming their design to. The selected device for a project can be modified by double-clicking the name of the device. This will open the device selector window. This window is similar to the one encountered during project creation. The current device for a project can be, can be modified using any of the fields in the window. Additionally, information about the current device is displayed on the right side of this window. If any changes are made in the device selector window, click the OK button in the bottom right to confirm the changes. 
The bottom most section of the file list tab is the project hierarchy view. This window contains a top-down hierarchical view of all the active design files in a project. The project hierarchy in this window is automatically updated whenever a project is saved. Each of the files in this window can be right-clicked to open a drop-down that has several useful options for file management. The first option, go to source definition, opens the selected file in Radiance text editor. The go to source instantiation option opens the file that instantiates the selected module. The line that the module is instantiated in will be selected. The go to netlist analyzer option will open Radiance netlist analyzer tool and will only appear if LSE is the active synthesis tool. Netlist Analyzer is a tool used to view the synthesized netlist for a project and is covered in more depth in chapter 4 of the video series. The Verilog test fixture declarations and Verilog test fixture template options can be used to simplify the process for creating test benches for a design. Finally, the set as top level unit and unset as top level unit options can be used to manage the hierarchy of a project. The last thing we are going to discuss in this section of the video series is Radiance output window. The output window is located in the bottom right part of the Lattice Radiant workspace and contains four tabs. The tabs in this window can be alternated between by selecting the name of the tab you want to switch to. The default tab of the output window is the Tickle console. This tab is essentially an integrated console for Tickle scripting. Users can execute their own Tickle commands or scripts in this tab. Additionally, the automated tickle commands used by Radiant are also displayed in this window. The second tab in the output window is called output. This window is Radiant's console output and contains information about the various processes that occur while Radiant is being used. The third tab, called find results, contains the results from a project search in Lattice Radiant. If there are any matches from a search, their file location and line will be displayed in this window. The fourth and final tab of the output window is called message. This tab contains an organized view of the various errors, warnings, and information messages that occur while using Radiant. If there are any new messages in this tab, a red dot will appear next to its name, like in the figure above. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 1.3, Project Strategies and Implementations, 